This is a 1927 Ford Model T, the vehicle that changed transportation forever. Now clearly this one's not stock, it's missing the fenders, the wooden spokes have been changed out for modern wire versions, and it's missing a few things like the steering column, engine, transmission, floors, basically the whole interior, steering wheel, lights, battery, radiator. And I just realized that I probably look like Jay Leno standing in front of an old car with a blue shirt on. God damn it. But none of that matters because this car right here is destined for greatness. Over the next four months, I'm gonna be taking this car here and turning it into a period correct race car to be raced at an event they call the Race of Gentlemen. What does this have to do with boots, you might be asking? Well, be quiet and I'll tell you. When you take your pre-1934 vehicle to the race of gentlemen, a lot of people there are also dressed in period correct garb. So they dress up with leather helmets and goggles and all kinds of stuff that looks like they're straight out of the 1930s. And this got me thinking, what would a working man who built a hot rod in the 1930s be wearing? Looking at photos from the time period, the answer was clear, engineer boots. It would have been easy to just buy a pair of West Coast Boss boots and call it a day, but they're a year out and the race is in October. So I went to my friends at Nick's Boots. Now Nick's and I have collaborated on a few models in the past and they've always been up for a challenge. But Nick's already have an engineer boot, the Renegade. What could we do to make an entirely different and unique model? After a few conversations with Grant, Nick's general manager, he told me about a set of vintage dyes they acquired recently. There was no brand name on them, only a vague stamp that read Engineer. An old Engineer boot pattern could be really cool if it were resurrected with Nick's build quality. That would make one hell of a shop boot. The reason Engineer boots make such great work boots is that they slip on easily. The lack of laces mean that sparks and welding slack don't get caught. And the flexibility of a laceless boot is handy when you're crouching or crawling underneath a silly hot rod project. We had a cool old pattern which turned out to be a perfect match to the car with a utilitarian look consisting of bold squared off sections contrasted with sweeping curves and tapers which reflect back to a time in history before everything looked the same. But like this nearly 100 year old car, stock isn't as fun as a little bit of hot rodding. <sighs> This is a 1927 Ford Model T four-cylinder engine block. It has a displacement of 177 cubic inches, made 20 horsepower, and rocketed the old Model T to a whopping 42 miles an hour. <laughs> Not exactly the stuff that wins races. We're planning on doubling that horsepower number with some old school speed parts and tricky engineering. Now, this engineer boot from NYX is very much the same kind of thing. We couldn't go with just any standard boot leather. This will be the only NYX boot offered in black Horween waxed flesh. It's only appropriate. After all, Henry Ford once said about his Model T, any color the customer wants, as long as it's black. Wax flesh also, arguably, has the most dramatic patina of any leather. And not for nothing, it kind of looks like our Model T project. Now, since the Model T only had two forward speeds and 20 horsepower, that resulted in people basically creating a huge aftermarket full of thousands of parts to solve the different challenges that were faced by this whole thing. And one of the most popular was the Ruxtel two-speed axle, which actually gave it a total of four gears. So you shifted the rear end and you'd shift the transmission. So it actually gave you four speeds in forward and two in reverse. I mean, heck, you know, why not? Two in reverse, sure. A look beneath the Nix engineer reveals a similar custom piece, a half sole. This is something that in my opinion entirely changes the look of a boot. I love that uninterrupted leather heel stack, the kind of lighter look of less rubber. It just makes for a leaner, meaner appearance, which also indicates a special Nix model. The toe is completely unstructured, meaning that over time it will flatten out and crease in a way that's unique to your usage. Sometimes a soft toe looks out of place, but I love it on an engineer boot. It'll just add to the extraordinary patina. 
After searching and searching for the origin of this vintage engineer pattern, we came to find out that it's highly likely a nap shoe pattern, or at least inspired by an old nap shoe pattern. So after I graduated high school and all of my friends were dispersing around the country, going to their college of choice, I went to work as an auto mechanic. And you know, it was okay, I didn't really mind it. But I do remember this one guy who would show up in his Lincoln town car with a trunk full of nap shoes. And so he would walk around the shop and he'd show everybody his boots, you know, hey, look at this boot, isn't this a nice boot? And try to get us to buy them. And I never did because I was making a whopping $7 an hour. I just really couldn't afford to buy these things. But that's one little thing that I'll always remember about nap. Nap Shoes was purchased by the Iron Age Corporation in the early 2000s, but by 2007, Nap Shoes had stopped circulating altogether because Iron Age had filed for bankruptcy. And while these engineer boots are inspired by those old Nap boots, they have the solid build quality NYX is known for, including multiple layers of leather beneath your feet, leather heel counter, and double row stitch down construction. Wearing these boots has been a pleasure. Familiar details like the Nick's backstay and pull loop make putting them on easy, a serious issue with most narrow shaft engineers. The leather has been quick to break in and the early stages of light brown patina have begun to show. I think this Horween waxed flesh is much easier to tame than Nick's usual work boot leathers. The shaft is unlined and unstructured with a true cut top. This spot has been an issue on some of my other engineer boots where the top face stitching rubs against my calves. I remember one day in particular while wearing my Lofgrens in New York City for a day, I had worn a spot raw on the back of each leg. With these, there's nothing but leather wrapping around your legs. To me, these NYX engineers combine utilitarian beauty and old school cool the same way this Model T does, and I can't wait to wear them while creating this thing and also racing it on the shores in New Jersey creating lasting memories with my friends and family who will come with me. And when I talk about owning better, looking better, and living better, that last part especially, this is exactly what I mean. These boots are now available for purchase, and if they seem like something that you want, please don't hesitate. These collaborations usually sell out within a matter of hours, so jump on them if it's something that you want. And if you really want to, come on down to Wildwood, New Jersey at the end of September, beginning of October, because we're gonna be racing. Standard NYX lead times apply. I think they're about five months out at this point. So you're gonna get them, but you know, relatively quickly. We're not talking about a year. So please enjoy, go and live life in these things, have fun, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>